My ex-husband walked out on me while I was pregnant, accusing me of betrayal. The first time I saw him, I was 18, freshly graduated from high school, and working at the local ice cream parlor. He came in with a group of friends, all of them sporting the carefree arrogance of youth and summer vacation. He was the tallest, with a mop of unruly brown hair and a smile that could melt glaciers. His name was Ethan, and he ordered a double scoop of chocolate chip cookie dough, his eyes twinkling with mischief as he watched me fumble with the scoop. We started dating soon after, a whirlwind romance that swept us both off our feet. He was everything I'd ever wanted, charming, funny, and fiercely protective. He adored me, showering me with compliments and gifts, his love as intoxicating as the summer air. Then, the world shifted on its axis. I was three months pregnant. I sat him down, my heart pounding in my chest, expecting an outpouring of joy, a future filled with promises. Instead, his face crumpled, his eyes hardening with a strange, unfamiliar pain. You're lying, he said, his voice barely a whisper. This isn't mine. I stared at him, the weight of his words crushing me. Ethan, what are you talking about? He shook his head, his eyes filled with a mixture of anger and fear. I know you've been seeing someone else. You wouldn't let me touch you for weeks. The air in the room grew heavy with unspoken accusations. My stomach twisted with a new kind of fear, one born not from the uncertainty of the future, but from the utter disbelief in his eyes. He had always been so sure of his love for me, so confident in our bond. Now, it felt like a fragile glass ornament, shattered by his sudden distrust. The next few weeks were a blur. Ethan retreated into a shell of silence his anger simmering just below the surface. He refused to listen to my explanations, convinced I was betraying him with another man. Every attempt at communication ended in bitter accusations, leaving me feeling like a stranger in my own relationship. The only person who offered me any comfort was my mother. She listened without judgment, her hand resting on mine in a gesture of unwavering support. She knew Ethan, having seen him through the rose-tinted lens of love. She warned me about his volatile nature, his deep-seated insecurities that could flare up unexpectedly. Yet, I was still clinging to a glimmer of hope, to the man I once thought I knew. But hope, like a wilting flower, soon withered under the weight of his accusations. He wouldn't even go to the doctor's appointments with me, his disdain for the situation growing more palpable with each passing day. He avoided me, retreating into a world where I was no longer welcome. One night, he finally broke the news. He was leaving. He packed his bags, his face expressionless, his words cold. I can't be with you anymore, he said. This is too much, too messy. My world shattered. I was left alone, pregnant and heartbroken, with the weight of his betrayal crushing me. He didn't even ask about the baby, the tiny human growing inside me. I was just an inconvenience, a problem to be solved, a burden to be discarded. The next few years were a blur of loneliness and pain. I moved back in with my mother, my once bright dreams replaced with the stark reality of single motherhood. I was young, scared, and utterly lost. My friends tried to be supportive, but their kind words couldn't fill the gaping hole in my heart. I felt like a broken doll, discarded after its playfulness had worn off. The day Ethan left, he took a piece of my soul with him. But as the days turned into weeks, and the weeks into months, a new kind of strength began to emerge. My pregnancy, initially a symbol of betrayal and abandonment, became my anchor, my reason to fight. I couldn't let Ethan's actions define me. I had to create a life for myself and my child, a life filled with love and happiness, despite the pain. The birth of my daughter, Amelia, was a revelation. Holding her in my arms, I felt an overwhelming sense of love and purpose. I knew then that I had to be strong, not just for myself, but for her. I had to build a future where she wouldn't have to face the same heartbreak I had. My mother became my rock, her unwavering support a constant source of comfort and strength. With her help, I started going to therapy, slowly piecing together the broken fragments of my heart. I learned to forgive myself, to acknowledge the pain I had endured but also to recognize my own resilience. Years passed, and Amelia grew into a bright, curious little girl. She was the sunshine in my life the reason I pushed through the darkest days. I worked tirelessly, raising her with love and determination, providing her with the stability and security she deserved. The silence from Ethan continued for years. 
He never reached out, never expressed any remorse. He had vanished from my life, leaving behind a gaping wound that refused to heal. Yet, as Amelia grew older, my desire for closure began to fade. I had built a life filled with love and laughter, a life that didn't require his presence. One day, Amelia, now ten years old, asked me about her father. Mommy, why don't I have a daddy like my friends? I took a deep breath, carefully choosing my words. Your father didn't want to be part of our lives, sweetheart. He didn't believe I was telling the truth. But that doesn't mean he doesn't love you. Amelia's brow furrowed, but he never even tried to see me. My heart ached for her. Sometimes people make mistakes, honey. But you are loved. You are cherished. And that's what truly matters. Amelia was a bright child, quick to grasp the complexities of the situation. She understood that Ethan's absence was not a reflection of her worth. It was a reflection of his own flawed choices, his inability to face his insecurities. Years later, when Amelia was in her late teens, she decided to reach out to Ethan. I was apprehensive, but ultimately supportive of her decision. She found him, living a seemingly successful life, yet still carrying the weight of his past mistakes. His reaction was unexpected. He was filled with regret, a mixture of guilt and sorrow that was palpable even through the phone. He had finally realized the truth, that he had allowed his insecurities to destroy the most precious thing in his life, his family. He expressed his desire to reconnect, to make amends for the pain he had caused. Amelia was hesitant, her trust not easily regained. Yet, she saw the sincerity in his voice, the genuine remorse for his past actions. They began to build a relationship, a slow and fragile process. It was not an easy path, marked by the scars of the past but they were both committed to making it work. As for me, I had learned a valuable lesson. I had survived, and thrived, despite the challenges life had thrown my way. I had found my strength, my resilience, and my unwavering love for my daughter. Ethan's absence, while painful, had ultimately led me to a place of self-discovery and acceptance. It had shown me that I was capable of incredible strength, of building a fulfilling life even when faced with adversity. It wasn't easy, but I had learned to embrace the beauty of the journey, the bumps and turns, the sunshine and the storms. And as I watched Amelia embrace the father she had missed for so long, I knew that forgiveness, while difficult, was a powerful force. It allowed me to release the past, to move forward with grace and understanding. It allowed me to find peace, not just for myself, but for Amelia, for Ethan, and for the future that lay ahead. My husband abandoned me to have an affair with another woman and they had a child. The first crack in the foundation of our marriage was the smell. Not the kind of smell you notice, but the kind you subconsciously register, a low-level hum of discord. It began subtly, a whiff of citrus mixed with something else, a faint hint of floral perfume, that I'd catch as I was leaving for work in the mornings. I was a creature of habit. Every morning was the same. Wake up at 6 a.m., make coffee, pack my lunch, kiss Michael goodbye, and leave for the office. Michael was a writer, his work schedule more flexible, his days punctuated by the clatter of the keyboard and the occasional hum of the refrigerator. At first, I dismissed the scent as my imagination. It was the stress, I told myself, the mounting pressure at work, the relentless deadlines. But the smell persisted, growing stronger with each passing day, until it was an unwelcome visitor in our home, a phantom in our shared space. My suspicions were confirmed one Saturday morning. I was clearing the breakfast table, the smell of burnt toast and Michael's favorite coffee beans clinging to the air, when I saw it. A pink floral scarf, draped carelessly over the back of the dining room chair, a stark contrast to the muted browns and blues that dominated our home. I picked it up, the silk soft against my fingers, a foreign object in our familiar space. The scent was unmistakable, the same citrus and floral blend that had been haunting our home. My heart stuttered, a drumbeat of fear and betrayal in my chest. Michael? I called out, my voice tight. Silence. I walked through the house, my footsteps echoing in the empty space. His laptop was open on the desk, a blank Word document mocking my search for answers. He was gone. It was his affair that broke me. Not the infidelity itself, but the way he left. Not with a confession, not with a plea for forgiveness but with a silence so deafening it echoed in my dreams. He simply vanished, leaving behind a trail of breadcrumbs leading to a life he had constructed in secret. 
The first clue was the scarf. I knew it belonged to someone else. A woman I hadn't met, a woman who occupied a space in Michael's life I hadn't known existed. I later found a crumpled receipt in the trash, a receipt from a local florist, for a bouquet of lilies, the same lilies he'd sent me for our anniversary last year. I started digging, I searched through his email, found hidden folders with the names of women I didn't recognize. I even hired a private investigator, a man with a steely gaze and a gravelly voice who promised me answers. He found what I already knew, but the truth hit me like a physical blow. Michael wasn't just having an affair, he was living a double life. He had moved out of our house months ago, renting a small apartment downtown. He was paying her bills, supporting her, building a life with her that he had pretended didn't exist. The worst part was that I was not the only one he had betrayed. His mistress was pregnant. It wasn't until the private investigator revealed this, that the ground beneath me gave way. A wave of nausea washed over me, the truth crushing me like a tide. I was devastated, yes, but the anger, the rage that simmered beneath the surface, was almost unbearable. He left me with nothing. Nothing but a house filled with memories, a heart filled with broken promises, and a life that felt like a shattered mosaic. The days that followed were a blur. I was numb, moving through the motions of life like an automaton, my mind consumed by the gaping hole in my world. My friends and family rallied around me, offering comfort and support, but their words felt hollow, their attempts to console me like whispers in a raging storm. Then came the phone call. It was from a woman, her voice a tremor of fear and uncertainty. She introduced herself as Sarah, Michael's mistress. She told me about her pregnancy, her fear of being alone, her desperation. He promised me a future, a family, she said, her voice breaking. But now he's gone. He left me with nothing. I don't know what to do. For the first time since Michael's disappearance, a sliver of empathy flickered in my heart. It was a strange, unexpected feeling, a sliver of understanding in the midst of my own hurt. I knew the feeling of being abandoned, of having your trust betrayed. I knew the feeling of being left with nothing but shattered dreams and a broken heart. I listened to her story, my voice a low murmur as I offered her words of support. There was a part of me that wanted to rage, to scream at her for taking my husband, for destroying my life. But there was another part, a part that had been wounded but not broken, that saw a reflection of myself in her vulnerability. It was then I made a decision. I would not let him win. I wouldn't let him define my life. I would not let him break me. I spent the next few weeks rebuilding my life, brick by painful brick. I found a lawyer, a fierce woman with a sharp intellect and a steely resolve, who helped me navigate the complexities of divorce and custody. We filed for divorce, a formal acknowledgement of the shattered remnants of our marriage. The proceedings were acrimonious, filled with accusations and recriminations. Michael refused to see me, refused to speak to me, his silence a weapon in the war that raged between us. The custody battle was the hardest. He had been so absent during his marriage, so detached from our lives, that I felt like a stranger to my own child. I was afraid of losing him, of being deemed unfit in the eyes of the court, of being relegated to the sidelines of my own son's life. But I fought for him. I fought for the right to be his mother, to be a part of his life, to love him unconditionally. The judge ruled in my favor. Michael was granted visitation rights, but the decision was clear. I was his primary caregiver, the one who had been there for him, the one who had loved him through his infancy, his childhood, and his adolescence. The day the judge announced his decision, I felt a wave of relief wash over me. It wasn't the victory I had expected, it was something more profound, a sense of peace, of closure, of moving forward. It was a long, arduous journey, one filled with pain, heartbreak, and anger. But in the end, I found myself. I found my strength, my resilience, my ability to love again. The truth is, Michael never really disappeared. He was always there lurking in the shadows of my memories, the specter of his betrayal haunting my dreams. But he no longer had the power to control me, to define me, to dictate my life. I chose to forgive him, not for his sake, but for my own. I forgave him not because he deserved it, but because I deserved the freedom that forgiveness offered. I am not the same woman I was when Michael left. I am stronger, wiser, more resilient. I am a survivor, a warrior, a mother who will protect her child at all costs. And even though Michael may have left me with nothing but a broken heart, 
I learned something precious. I am stronger than I ever thought possible. And I am worthy of love, of happiness, of a future filled with joy and hope. Life is unpredictable. It throws curveballs at you, tests your limits, pushes you to your breaking point. But it also offers opportunities for growth, for change, for redemption. And in the end, it is our choices that define us. The scar Michael left on my heart will always be there, a reminder of the pain, the betrayal, the shattered dreams. But it is also a testament to my strength, my resilience, my ability to overcome adversity. The pain will never fully disappear, but it no longer defines me. I am a woman who has survived heartbreak, who has found her way back to herself. And I am stronger for it.